What is up, everybody? Welcome back to State of Steelers, where we'll be breaking down the touchdown passes for the Pittsburgh Steelers through the 2023-2024 season and kind of compare between Kenny Pickett's touchdown passes and Mason Rudolph's touchdown passes. In 2023, Kenny Pickett ended up with six touchdown passes and Mason with five TDs, so we'll be able to go through them back to back, side by side, and let's get this going. But before we do, please hit that like and subscribe button and ring that notification bell. So in this, this is the first uh, touchdown of the season. Uh, this is week one against the uh, San Francisco 49ers. And what you have here is you're going to have Friermuth go up and just kind of turn around and come back towards or look towards Pickett. And you're going to have Deontay Johnson kind of run a flat out there towards the sideline. Now you have three defenders relatively close in that area where Pat Friermuth is going to be doing his turnaround. But curiously, up top of the screen, you're going to have you're going to have the slot receiver and the outside receiver run a similar post route. And that slot receiver is is George Pickens, and he's going to attract a lot of attention. Going into the regular season, there was a lot of hype and noise about George Pickens, especially after his Moss catch over Joy Porter Jr. So I think that the 49ers were going to make sure that he didn't beat them over the top. Snaps the ball. He puts the ball just outside of where that inside linebacker can reach. I just kind of look up at the top of your screen. You're going to see Allen Robinson come wide open. But right here, any closer to move, this is not a completion. It's the only place where completion could be made. You know, I'm not going to complain about a touchdown. It's just a tight window throw. Could have had Allen Robinson in the end zone where the H is. Been a little bit easier of a, of, of a touchdown. But like I said, regardless, this is a touchdown pass. But overall, I mean, the placement is great. It is a touchdown. Steelers end up losing this game. This is the only score of the entire game, I believe, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now let's look at Mason Rudolph in a somewhat similar situation. You're going to have that similar post pattern by two receivers at the top of your screen. This is what the defense is going to be running. You're going to have most of them run back in zone. Uh, the linebacker is playing man against the slot receiver who's going to be crossing in front. And you're going to have Mason Rudolph just kind of fit that ball there to Deontay Johnson on two similar post routes like we saw on the play before. Now I pause this here just to kind of show you guys. There is absolutely nobody else open on this play. The only place to throw the ball is to Deontay Johnson right here where he's at. Mason Rudolph reads it, sees it is decisive with the throw, throws it in his own time, and it's a touchdown. You probably want him to throw it a little bit more towards the inside there, maybe kind of guide him a little bit more towards the end zone. And he did kind of have to stop there for a second. Let's see. Watch. Maybe. I mean, he could be also just kind of protecting him from the safety. Mason Rudolph also did have some pressure, as you can see from – uh, this angle here, Dante Johnson has his guy beat. There is a safety there. And like I said, maybe perhaps he's not leading him too far because if he does, then you know, maybe he's going to get into some trouble with the safety. This is a big touchdown to George Pickens. This one's against the Cleveland Browns. And I think this is one of my favorite plays from Kenny Pickett, mainly because he goes through his progressions. He stays in the pocket. He finds the wide open guy. He is decisive with this throw and he makes it right on time. I mean, these are the things that you want a quarterback to do routinely. In my opinion, this is one of his best touchdown throws of the year. Scans, sees George Pickens open, makes the throw, and George does the rest. So you can kind of just see he, he's scanning, he's going through his progressions, and he finds George Pickens. This is exactly what you want out of your quarterback. The best play that I found for comparison against that one is on this play here with Mason Rudolph versus the Baltimore Ravens. This is in the season finale. This is the one that Deontay Johnson breaks for a touchdown. You have two safeties over the top. They're going to be playing zone. You have man coverage on the top of your screen there. These are the routes that you have. Now, what Mason Rudolph does is he looks at Pat Fryermuth, who is the tight end, and he's going to be running into the middle of the field, and he holds the safety there long enough to get Deontay Johnson coming up over on a post route. 
But in my opinion, I think that this ball is designed to go to Allen Robinson, the lot receiver. He ends up coming wide open, but but Mason sees what's happening behind him and is able to read that, throw it, and hit him right on time. He's off with the races, y'all. Not going to catch him. And the best, in my opinion, showing of this play or the best angles actually from the game footage. You can have Pat Fryermuth come up, and like I said, it's going to attract the safety over to the left. Open up a hole right there for Deontay Johnson. The Allen Robinson right here at the 30-yard line, he's going to come back. Deontay Johnson is running behind him. His defensive player is going to run into Allen Robinson's defensive player. It's a little bit of a rub play. And Allen Robinson is open enough for the first down. In my opinion, that's where Mason Rudolph is really kind of looking at. I think he looks at Pat Farmuth and then he goes to Allen Robinson and sees what happens behind him, turns off, and then makes the throw to Deontay Johnson. And he's off for the races. Like I said, I ain't going to catch him. Right, this next one is Kenny Pickett's last touchdown of the year. This against the Tennessee Titans. He had four games after this, which he did not have a touchdown through the air. And on this play, what you have is you have no safety help at the top. You're probably going to have some sort of blitz. And you have press coverage over the top here. These are the routes that they're going to be running. You're going to have Allen Robinson kind of go out towards the sideline and then come back in towards the middle. That's going to create a pick play right here. Dante Johnson is going to go behind Allen Robinson, cut inward, then cut outward. That pick play works. Dante Johnson is wide open. It was a great play, great design. It was great that that Kenny Pickett was able to see this. I prefer that ball to be a little bit more in front of him, not so much behind him like that. I, just, I, I, I don't know. It would be just a little bit pit, nitpicky. I, I just think that the ball should be a little bit in front of him. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Also, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and share with your friends and tell them to share with a friend and a friend. Good decisive throw. It's a good job by Kenny Pickett. There's a similar situation where Mason Rudolph's going to fit the ball into Calvin Austin. And in this situation here, you have no safety also at the top, but you're going to have the remaining players you know, play a zone play. You're going to have the linebacker with the red arrow is going to be following Najee Harris. Everybody else is just kind of dropping back in coverage. These are the routes that you have. You're going to have two receivers kind of push to the, uh, the sideline at the top of your screen, and you're going to have Calvin Austin kind of come back around and and get this ball. So right here you have, and we'll start off at the top of the screen. You have Pat Fryermuth. He's being covered by the uh, cornerback out there. You have Calvin Austin, who is somewhat open. And it's probably the most open person on this field. He's the ball that uh, he's the player that Mason Rudolph is throwing the ball to. And as you can see, Mason's already let go of the ball. Uh, just above him, you have Deontay Johnson, who's double covered. Down towards the bottom of your screen, you have Najee Harris, who's also covered. And uh, next to him, you have George Pickens, who is also double covered. So the only place to throw this ball is to, can't remember what quarterback it was, probably one I don't like. Uh, that said, it, it's my job to find the open person. That's what Mason Rudolph is doing. Now, there's a question there about the placement of the ball as well. It's a little bit on the inside shoulder. Let me rewind this just a half a second. I think if he leads him, you know, into the other shoulder or leads him into the end zone, he's going to run into trouble right here with number 52 for the Buffalo Bills. Calvin Austin's a smaller receiver. That's a middle linebacker. That's not a good matchup. All right, let's look at some deep throws down the sideline by Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph. The first one we're going to look at is going to be Kenny Pickett. It's against the Baltimore Ravens. And you have no safety help. Probably going to have a blitz. You know, man press coverage at the bottom of your screen on George Pickens. No help over the top. It was definitely going to George the entire way. Now, what Kenny Pickett does is he apparently shifts the lineman to the right to protect him. That's where the blitz is coming from. But he also kind of drifts to the right as well. And he ends up going you know, pretty far out to the right. Now, if you look at where the blockers are at, I never played quarterback, but I always thought that the person, whether you're blocking for the quarterback or the running back, should be behind the line. You know, be behind the butts. You want to be, you know, want to run towards their rear. Now, you don't want to run where they're facing because where they're facing is usually a defensive player. 
in my opinion, I think that maybe perhaps he needs to be a little bit more inside, maybe perhaps even up higher into the pocket versus kind of drifting out to the right here. I think he should be in that pocket, but yeah, he came out this direction. He knew he was going to throw to George Pickens automatically. That was said in the press conference afterwards. I think there's a possibility that the reason why he came out this far to the right is so that he can throw the ball and reach it to George Pickens where it needed to be. You know, it's kind of like a TV screen, right? Where you have the length, you have the width, and yet it doesn't equal up to what the size of the screen is, right? Like in this situation, you have a 38 inches length, um, 24.9 inches in height. It's a 42 inch TV. So if you were to apply this onto the football field, if you were to make the height, I put that in quotations, shorter than the distance between the throw and where it lands is shorter as well. I, you know, something I picked up on, I thought of maybe perhaps he's just trying to get a better angle so he can get the ball out there. Right here, you're going to be able to see how all the linemen push to the right. And there's just, I mean, there's a nice little pocket there behind Cole and Herbig. It's a good throw, though. It's an accurate throw. He dropped it right in on the bucket. Look at that. Perfect. Gave this guy a chance to run with the ball. You know, Yak wasn't something that was there for the receivers with Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett. In this situation, it definitely was. Good for George Pickens. Good for Kenny Pickett. That, that was a good throw. This is a good throw. It's an accurate throw. Mason Rudolph had a similar throw like that against Cincinnati. In fact, this was his first pass play of the game, his first pass as a starting quarterback in 2023. Remember, he hadn't really took any reps. He only had three practices up to this point and hadn't been in a regular season stadium in over two years. You have single safety over the top. You have man pressure with George Pickens. Same situation there. You're going to have a blitz. You're going to have several guys come in. Mason Rudolph just lets it fly. Good position, good play. I like it. As you can see, he stays in the pocket and he doesn't move around. He snaps the ball, stays in the pocket. No panic. His feet aren't pumping up and down. Throws the ball. Perfect pass. This one here is against the Las Vegas Raiders. This is where Kenny Pickett hits Calvin Austin in stride down the middle of the field. And this play works because of George Pickens at the top of your screen. He's shown that he can get over the top on cornerbacks and make some spectacular catches. So the Las Vegas Raiders decided to double team. Calvin Austin missed all of last season with a foot injury, went on IR. So, you know, I think this was like week three. You know, not a lot of tape on Calvin Austin. They didn't know how fast he was. I guarantee you, Las Vegas knows how fast Calvin Austin is now. It's a good read by Kenny Pickett. It's a great throw. Accurate anticipation. It's right there. Steps back, looks, throws. Down the middle of the field, deep down the middle of the field. I like it. Yeah. He's moving around. He looks, looking with his eyes. Yes, this is in a dome, so the conditions are, are perfect. But, I mean, it still requires a pretty good throw there by Kenny Pickett. Can't take that away from him. So, on this play, Mason Rudolph gets somewhat of an open guy. in George Pickens, he hits him, and the, he goes the distance as well. So, we're trying to... You know, kind of compare similar type of plays. Mason Rudolph didn't really have one down the center of the field that long. This is probably the closest in comparison when we're looking at the touchdowns that were accumulated. What you have here is you're going to have single safety. You're going to have man press here. You're just going to have a simple concept where you're going to have the slot receiver flat out in towards the sideline. You're going to have a slant route underneath. Great throw and placement of the ball. In fact, from the other angle, you can tell that it's a much tighter throw or a closer th window throw. See that middle linebacker right there. I mean, he's not that close, but I mean, if Mason kind of leads him out a little bit further, there's there's a possibility of a play to be made there. Well, wow, what George Pickens can do with the ball in his hands in the open. Touchdown after touchdown. And for the last touchdown pass that we're going to look at today, this one's Kenny Pickett. Like I said, he had six to Mason Rudolph's five. So he ends up having one more. And on this play here, you're going to have a pass or a play action pass. And what's going to end up happening is your linebacker is going to get sucked in because of the play action. Kenny Pickett's going to see it. He's going to hit Pat Fryermuth over the top, wide open. Easy touchdown for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this was, I believe, his first Multiple touchdown game through the air for Kenny Pickett. Let's rewind that a little bit. 
check out number five there for Las Vegas. Goes in. He he's the one that actually bites the most on the uh, play action pass watch. He goes in, turns around. That's it. It's over. Once he jumps in and hops in, it's over. It's done. Pat Fryermuth has position. Wide open. Good throw. Good play. So all in all, between Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph, the Pittsburgh Steelers had 11 TDs through the air. Ability is definitely there when it comes to both of these quarterbacks. You know, obviously, I think one of them is just a little bit more advanced or maybe perhaps the game is slowed down a little bit more for him than the other. It kind of does give you a little bit of hope for Kenny Pickett when you see a Mason Rudolph who had some of these same problems, you know, the happy feet, leaving clean pockets, things like that that Kenny Pickett is struggling with right now. You know, it took Mason Rudolph to sit down for a couple of years and, you know, he had to get an opportunity, but once he did, he was able to maximize that opportunity and show that those demons that plagued him early in his career were finally exercised. There weren't those happy feet. The decisiveness of Mason Rudolph is there. You know, I went to see the Steelers play in 2019 against the Miami Dolphins on primetime, and this was one of the games where Mason Rudolph played, and it was going up against a Dolphins team that was defeated the entire year. I think they were like 0-7 at that time. And early in that game, the Steelers were down. And I kept thinking to myself, I don't think this is the guy. You know, how can you be down to a team that is winless, that is trying to tank? And he came back and the Steelers ended up winning. He made some throws, but when I left the stadium, I felt like he was about half a second slow with his decision making. And I felt like he made the right choices. He made the right throws. It was just a tad bit off. I felt that if the game could slow down for Mason Rudolph, I thought he could be an excellent quarterback in this league. I'm happy to see that the game has finally slowed down for him. And I'm happy to see her. And I hope to see him in a Pittsburgh Steelers uniform next year. It'll be interesting to see how the Steelers go through that quarterback one role. And and it'll be interesting to see how they determine which one of the two players, if there is a determination to be made. As of right now, at this recording, Mason Rudolph has not signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers for 2024, although there are some hints there on his Twitter and things like that, that he's coming back. But let me know in the comments section, which touchdowns were you most impressed with? Which one was your favorite? And the last thing I want to know in the comment section is who do you think is going to be QB1 start of 2024? Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.